prices starting at $39.99. Find jewelry 75% off and 65% off sheets and bedding from Charter Club and more. Get it faster with curbside pickup at Macy's. If you've had thyroid eye disease for years and your inflamed eyes are so watery they need windshield wipers, it's not too late for another treatment option. To learn more, visit TreatTed.com. That's TreatTed.com. Tomorrow on E.T., Donna Summer's daughter shares rare stories and home movies. When she was home, she was mommy. The new documentary about the queen of disco. I work hard for my money. Make sure you check that out. And here's one more thing before we go. Take care, y'all. Good night. I love a good shopping spree. Nothing better than to be able to shop and be able to fit. Happening now. A suspected serial killer was arrested in Austin. He's being investigated for eight to ten murders. Coming up, we'll tell you why Austin police is now working with San Antonio police. After killing a mother and father, orphaning their four children in a DWI accident, Elena Carranza was back in court today. Why that visit will cost her 15 years in prison. Today marks the beginning of hurricane season for us, and there is a little system we're keeping an eye on in the Gulf. I'll touch on that along with an update to our rain chances in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, Austin and San Antonio police are now working together after a serial killer confessed to multiple murders in Austin, as well as a double murder here in San Antonio. Raul Mesa has been in trouble before. He was convicted of assaulting and killing an 8-year-old girl back in the 1980s. But he was released early after only 11 years. And now police believe he could be involved in eight to 10 other murders from as far back as 1996. Camelia Juarez with why some San Antonians feared for this man's release, fears that now appear to be founded. Mr. Meza said he was ready and prepared to kill again, and he was looking forward to it. Over the weekend, 62-year-old Raul Mesa was arrested in Austin. He was found with a pistol and zip ties. The arrest comes after a call was made to the Austin Police 311 number last week. And the caller stated, my name is Raul Mesa and you're looking for me. Police believe it was Meza on the phone. They say he confessed to killing his roommate, 80-year-old Jesse Fraga and 66-year-old Gloria Lofton back in 2019. Meza described his life in and out of prison and said, I quote, I got out in 2016. I end up murdering a lady soon afterwards. Raul Mesa. The name might sound familiar because he was convicted of assaulting and killing an eight-year-old in Austin back in the 80s. He was sentenced to 30 years but released early for good behavior in 1993. And has killed how many people we don't know. So here's a serial killer that, that uh, justice was not served. So it was a travesty of justice. After being released from parole for the murder of a child, there were protests in San Antonio when he was planning to live here. The current arrest affidavit states that he confessed to a double murder in San Antonio. Now, San Antonio police homicide detectives are working with Austin police investigating those confessed murders. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. More than two years after Bear County prosecutors say Elena Carranza slammed into a minivan while killing a couple and injuring their four children, she was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Today, Carranza received that sentence after accepting a plea deal. Back in the spring of 2021, she was indicted on two counts of intoxication manslaughter. Prosecutors say back on January 3rd, 2021, Carranza was drinking at a bar on the Riverwalk, got behind the wheel of a pickup truck, Two hours later, police in Halotis were responding to this scene. 54-year-old Craig Smith and his 39-year-old wife died at the scene. Their children, all under the age of 16 at the time, were taken to the hospital. As part of the plea deal, Carranza was given 30 years total for both manslaughter charges, but her sentences will now run concurrently. So now she will serve 15 years. A scary reminder, excuse me, to other news now, San Antonio police play a San Antonio police officer placed on unpaid administrative leave effective immediately. This after he was arrested by Bear County Sheriff's deputies for invasive video recording. Officer Andres Puentes was actually taken into custody last night. According to arrest documents, Puentes's ex-girlfriend called deputies after she says she found a hidden camera in her home. The camera disguised as one of those electronic wall outlet extenders that you plug in. Documents say the deputies found an SD card. Footage on the card reportedly shows the victim and her underage daughter partially dressed. 
Plentas will remain on temporary unpaid leave pending the conclusion of a criminal and administrative investigation. Now to that scary reminder for drivers to heed the warnings to stay a few feet away from the back of 18 wheelers on the road. This after the back of a big rig burst into flames on I-10 early this morning. Happened about 4.30 on I-10 near Loop 410 on the east side. Officers say at the scene say it's unclear why that tractor trailer caught fire. Fortunately, the driver of the big rig was able to get out of the cab safely. Early morning commuters did have to deal with traffic delays and slowdowns for quite a while. The police department is still investigating. There was a new face on the San Antonio City Council today. Business attorney Mark White sworn in for his first term alongside the other winners of the May election who were all incumbents. The Northside Councilman replaces Clayton Perry, who decided not to run again after causing a drunken hit and run crash. White says it was a little surreal waking up this morning knowing he'd be here. But again, uh, this is something that, uh, that I've wanted to do for a while. Um, I've enjoyed getting to know my colleagues uh, over the past couple of weeks, you know, sitting down with them, talking about, you know, what's important to their district, telling them what my priorities are. And so again, I'm just ready to go to work. There are two council spots that still have to be decided in the June 10th runoff. District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo is being challenged by Sue Kaur, while two newcomers, Marina Alderate Gavito and Dan Rossiter, are fighting it out in District 7. Across America at five authorities in Memphis, Tennessee, investigating following a deadly apartment fire. Firefighters called out to the two story apartment building yesterday afternoon. The victims, four children, reportedly two four year olds and a six year old and a two year old. Investigators are trying to determine what caused that fire as well as why the children weren't able to get out. Former candidate for the New Mexico House of Representatives indicted for allegedly shooting at the homes of Democrats. Solomon Pena indicted by a federal grand jury. He's charged with conspiracy and interference with federally protected activities, along with several gun offenses, too. The Justice Department says after he lost his November 2022 electoral race, Pena allegedly organized shootings that targeted the homes of two Bernalillo county commissioners and two New Mexico state legislators. No one was hurt in those shooting plans if convicted, though, on the charges and on the state criminal charges. Pena faces a mandatory minimum of 60 years in prison. Minnesota's governor trying to assure people living south of the Canadian border that following a train derailment this morning, everything is OK. The governor says the Canadian Pacific train traveling through Lancaster was carrying hazardous materials and unspecified flammable liquid. But they say there were no immediate signs of any leaks from the crash train. County emergency personnel enacted precautionary measures just in case leaks were detected. So far, no injuries have been reported. The derailment forced a highway closure. The governor tweeted that the site has been contained and experts will survey the area. The Democratic and Republican leaders in the Senate now pushing to fast track that debt ceiling legislation that passed overwhelmingly in the House last night with bipartisan support. But with any individual senator able to block the swift passage, ABC's M. Wynn tells us unhappy conservative or progressive members could delay the bill past the Treasury Department's projected June 5th deadline for the U.S. to default on its debts. The U.S. Senate is racing against time to approve the House-passed bill President Joe Biden and Speaker Kevin McCarthy negotiated to raise the debt ceiling. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has projected a June 5th deadline for the nation to run out of money to pay its bills, which would likely result in a disaster for the U.S. and global economies. No good reason to bring this process down to the wire. In a rare show of unity on Capitol Hill, both Senate leaders are urging their members to promptly pass the bill that would avert the current debt ceiling crisis and suspend the borrowing cap until January 2025. The Senate cannot afford to neglect its obligation to America's men and women in uniform. Any senator can slow passage of this bill, and already some have proposed amendments. While some progressive members oppose the added work requirements for food stamp recipients aged 50 to 54. This debt ceiling agreement will cut programs for some of the most vulnerable people in America. Some conservative Republicans are demanding more defense spending. We'll be here to Tuesday until I get commitments that we're going to rectify 
some of these problems. Yeas are 314, the nays are 117. Speaker McCarthy and his Democratic counterpart hailing the overwhelming passage of the compromise bill in the House despite dozens of their members voting no. This is the biggest cut in savings this Congress has ever voted for. We had an obligation, a responsibility to avoid a catastrophic default. Senate leadership wants to pass this debt ceiling bill either today or tomorrow, and President Biden has vowed to sign it immediately to avert a potentially catastrophic default. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Check out the roadways right now. I want to show you a traffic trouble spot. As a matter of fact, this is 410 at Jackson Keller. I believe it's the eastbound lanes that we're looking at right there. You can see at least three lanes closed down, a traffic accident that they're trying to get out of the way. You see a tow truck there on the side of the road. We'll keep you updated on this one. After Memorial Day, it's the other official, well, unofficial start to summer hurricane season. It kicks off Thursday in the Atlantic and weather experts have some mixed predictions about how severe this is going to be. Yeah, for those living in coastal areas still trying to recover from last year's season, any storm of any size, not welcome. Laura Aguirre has more on what's on the radar this year. NOAA is predicting a near normal 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. Near normal, which depending on where you live, may have a very different meaning. There's nothing good about a near normal hurricane season in terms of activity. We're expecting a busy season. Busy indeed. Forecasters predict up to 17 named tropical storms could develop. Of those, five to nine could become hurricanes, and possibly four of those could become major hurricanes, cat three or higher, with sustained winds of up to 129 miles per hour or stronger. That raises the prospects for significant impacts. On day one of the season, the National Hurricane Center is already tracking a potential tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico. They say it could develop into the season's first named storm. If that happens, it'll be Arlene, the name topping the list for 2023. In this case, the NHC says landfall is not expected. A major storm of any severity could be devastating for parts of Florida, where many are still trying to recover after the Category 4 Hurricane Ian hit last year. We're just hoping it, it doesn't happen again. Uh, it'd be really bad luck if it did, especially after we just opened up to the public again. Along with NOAA, the other major season forecast comes from Colorado State University. Researchers there say they expect a slightly below average season, one that will last until November 30th. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. And we've been watching that uh, cluster of storms in the eastern Gulf of Mexico that earlier today, just a little bit ago, the National Hurricane Center deemed tropical depression number two with winds of up to 35 miles per hour. So not a big system. This is a very low end system. The forecast is to take it southward, potentially briefly, barely becoming a tropical storm uh, with winds of about maybe 45 miles per hour around the center of it. I mean, we see higher winds from cold fronts around here and then dissipating as we get into Saturday and Sunday as it heads towards Cuba. So basically just a bit of a rainmaker with a few thunderstorms in it in the eastern Gulf. Radar around here, we're dry right now. We had a few of those highly isolated showers earlier today. They've come to an end as we go through the evening. Partly cloudy, near average temperatures. 10 o'clock, we're at 78, midnight at 75 degrees. The newest drought monitor is in. We're going to compare it to what we had on May 1st to the improvements we have now, along with an update to our storm chances in a bit. Thank you, Adam. Straight ahead, celebrations pack the month of June, but you don't have to break the bank to show you care. Up next, we're going to give you a look at some of the sales happening this month on some of the most popular gift items. I'm Myra Arthur with a look at what we're working on for the news at six today. Both sides resting in the trial of Mark Howerton. He's on trial for a second time in the death of a Trinity University student. Today, how the judge called into question a witness that the defense said was an expert weighing in on drugs in Kaylee Mandotti's system. Plus, if your doctor prescribes a pill a day for high blood pressure, you are far from alone. Many San Antonians deal with that issue. Today at 6 o'clock, while you might be able to ditch that pill and still get your blood pressure under control, there's another way. All that and more today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra.
Well, as we head into June, summer sales are starting to heat up, especially when it comes to graduations and Father's Day. 12 of your size, Marilyn Morris is going to show us a few top rated gift ideas that are on sale right now. From dads to grads, there's a lot to celebrate this month. So if you need a gift or something for yourself, Consumer Reports says some of its top tested products are on sale. In the beginning of June, you might see ongoing Memorial Day sales on things like dishwashers, blenders, and mattresses. And with Father's Day coming up on June 18th, start to look for discounts on things like tech items and power tools. Nothing says DIY dad like a power tool. This drill from DeWalt is $105 at Amazon. It's cordless and pretty powerful. That's more than 50 bucks off. Know a new dad? He can still get his workout in with a jogging stroller. The Thule Urban Glide 2 is $549.95 at Nordstrom and Pottery Barn Kids. CR testers say it's easy to maneuver and has a handy handbrake. Graduation is a good time for a new smartwatch. This Apple Watch SE is $149 at Walmart. That's $130 off. This first-generation Apple Watch did great in Consumer Reports tests. If you don't need the features of a newer model, this one is a big money saver. And here's a way to whip up a smoothie or frozen dessert. The Vitamix One is $149.95 at Wayfair. A cool way to jump into summer and you'll save a cool $100. And as we spend more time outdoors, it's a great time to look for sales and stock up on bug spray and sunscreen. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Ah, bug spray. Oh, yeah, especially with the rain we've yeah, had. This that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's the official start of summer for me. All right, Aquatica out at SeaWorld. Looks like they're doing a good business today. Oh, yeah, they're doing great business in the sunshine. And now that school's out for the summer, all the kids celebrating at home, aren't they? And we do have some storm chances to talk about in the days ahead. I don't expect much tomorrow, maybe one or two closer to the Rio Grande or even in the Western Hill Country. We're talking Rock Springs area, possibly toward Lakey. Take a look at the chances here. Just a 10% chance around San Antonio tomorrow. But west of town, 20 to 30 percent tomorrow afternoon and evening. Then we get daily 30 percent chances. So isolated to widely scattered or widely separated downpours setting up with a little bit of lightning and thunder. And this could even happen at night and in the early morning over the upcoming weekend. We'll watch the organization of our potential organization of storms in West Texas and we could get some of their remnants. We had that a couple of times last week. Could happen again this weekend, late night, early morning. Okay, this is the drought monitor, May 1st. I know this says April 1st. It's really May 1st drought monitor. We're, we're comparing May 1st to, get ready for it, now. Oh, baby, isn't that nice to see? Yeah, let's do it again, do it one more time, one more time, one more time. Okay, May 1st drought monitor. Ah, today's drought monitor looking much, much, much better. We still have some areas that need improvement, especially right here along the Guadalupe River, Kerrville to Sisterdale, all the way to Canyon Lake. This is where we still have extreme and exceptional drought, but cross your fingers for the days ahead with those isolated showers. And we've seen some big improvements up in the Panhandle and parts of West Texas. Now 34% of Texas is considered in drought and we're putting a dent in it up in the Panhandle and off to the north of us, north and west of San Angelo around Lubbock and even closer to Amarillo earlier today. It's good to see some of that activity out there. But as I mentioned over the weekend, we could see some organization and then leftovers of that move our way over the late nights and early mornings this weekend. There's TD2, barely a tropical system. Whatever, it's not going to have an impact on our weather and really not going to have a big impact on anybody's weather, to be honest with you. Upper level high has been influencing us. It's centered over Mexico. But that's going to break down as we get over the next several days. That's why we reintroduce those chances of sh daily showers and storms. 89, so far that's our high today. We'll have an update at 6 o'clock. Weather watchers, 89 in Mico, 86 Bulverde, 90 right now in Lavernia. For the most part, temperatures well into the 80s to right around the 90 degree mark. Very typical for this time of year and kind of like what we had this time yesterday. Tomorrow we start at 71 with the low clouds early again and maybe a stray sprinkler isolated shower kind of like what we had early today. But 
minimal accumulations, negligible. And then sunny, making it to 90 degrees for a high temperature and a few showers and storms possible closer to the Rio Grande. The off chance one or two of them could become severe and even the western hill country we need to watch tomorrow. Right near 90 degrees and then actually temperatures drop off a little bit this weekend and into next week, closer to 86, 87. Thank you, Adam. All right, it, the NBA Finals start tonight, and I guess comparisons are inevitable. That, that is correct, and we're talking about specifically Nikola Jokic coming into this, the temperament he has, because he's not a traditional NBA superstar. He's not flashy, but he's still going to put up stats, and that, that reminds you of anybody? It's going to remind you of Tim Duncan. We come back, we'll hear from Michael Malone on that comparison. Plus, there's a new quarterback coach in Dallas. Mike McCarthy breaks down that change next. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Head coach Mike McCarthy is now the man calling plays for Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott. Dallas also went out and hired Brian Schottenheimer to replace Kellen Moore as offensive coordinator. But one of the consequences of letting Moore go was that they lost quarterbacks coach Doug Nussmeyer, who'd served that role in Dallas for the last three years. He packed up and went to the Chargers along with Moore. So who replaces him? Scott Tolzien, a former Packers quarterback who graduated from Wisconsin and actually played for McCarthy in Green Bay from 2013 to 2015. McCarthy knew Tolzien would eventually be a great coach based on his preparation and practice. I don't know if he ever went home. Uh, I mean, he was always at the facility, you know, and now he's married. He has a couple kids now, so he's doing a much, much better job. But he was always there, uh, couldn't get enough of it. So uh, you could tell right away just, just his mental preparation was, you know, top notch of all the guys I work with. Hopefully it pays off the season. Cowboys have one more OTA practice before mandatory minicamp begins on the 6th. Game one of the NBA Finals tips off tonight in Denver for the first time ever. The top seeded Nuggets have stormed through the playoffs and have only lost three games over the course of three playoff series. At the heart of it all is talented big man Nikola Jokic, who's averaging 24 points, nearly 12 rebounds, and 10 assists in the postseason. Head coach Michael Malone compared his play and temperament to a Spurs legend. Tim Duncan was a selfless superstar. And I, I look at Nicole Jokic in the same vein. I think Nicole Jokic is a truly selfless superstar where it's not about him. He's not looking for people to look, look at me, tell me how great I am. He's almost embarrassed by the attention. He just wants to be one of the guys in the locker room, have fun, work hard, and win. Meanwhile, the Heat have overcome significant odds as an eighth seed. They were the last team to qualify for the official playoff field, and they've since taken down the top seeded Bucks, the Knicks, and the number two seeded Boston Celtics in some hard fought playoff series. Head coach Eric Sprolster thinks he's got a special group. This group has been able to overcome a lot of different things, uh, handle a lot of adversity, uh, setbacks. Um, things that have not gone the way we wanted it to go. Uh, and instead of uh, having that collapse our spirit, it, it allowed us to develop some fortitude and grit collectively uh, and give us something to rally around. It all gets underway tonight at 7.30 p.m. You can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. I know we tend to have the same teams this time of year every time of year. It's nice to see the Nuggets finally get a crack yeah, at Yeah, different teams. In yes. There. And by the way, I, I get the Duncan Jokic comparison from what the coach was talking about. Right. Now, granted, he's got five titles to go before exactly. it's a fair comparison. It's a, it's a very com good compliment to the Joker. Yeah. Yes. We'll be right back. Now that May has officially come to a close here in San Antonio, 0.3 degrees below average officially in town. Looks like June will start a little below average as well. Thanks for watching. See you at six.